hovercrafts. They're pretty cool. They're just this machine that you can ride on that can go on land and on water. They are inefficient. They have a skirt, which can be ripped apart fairly easily. They have a giant fan in the back. And they're a lot of fun. Very expensive. The technology for hovercrafts hasn't really changed over the course of many years. Almost all of them are exactly the same. And they haven't been improved in a very long time. Me and a team of four other students decided that we were going to create our own unmanned hovercraft. Well, we didn't decide this. We were put into a capstone group, and this was our project. We had a lot of design considerations and constraints that we had to follow. Specifically, we had to make this thing additive, which means that I had to do a lot of 3D printing. This thing also could not be larger than two feet fit inside of a two-foot box, but it also had to be as close to two feet as possible, so we basically made it entirely two feet, which means that not only did this require a lot of 3D printing, but it required a lot of 3D printed parts as well. In total, the entire design took 338 hours to print, and it took five rolls of filament to be able to print it all out. We only had a budget of $500, and we only had a month to make this, so I needed to get started on this thing right away. I had to go fast. I used all the printers that I had, and I had all of the rolls of PLA, PETG, and TPU on hand to be able to start this process as fast as possible. We did so much printing. I had to do printing at work, I did printing at home. I used every single printer that I possibly could with all the filament. I even used filament that wasn't in the budget, filament that we didn't even buy. I had to go quick. Okay, maybe not that fast. But there were a lot of failures. Roughly 30 hours worth of failures. This was a small setback, but luckily we were able to get it all done. I had to cut up every part into fourths to be able to even fit it on any of my beds. But after a very long time, we were able to get it done. After two weeks of ordering all of our parts, we finally got everything in and we were able to actually start assembling the material. But first, I had to go through every single part that we had purchased through our campus to see if anything was broken and to see if we got any of the right stuff. We ended up not getting the right microcontroller and we ended up only getting one ESC instead of getting three ESCs. This meant that we had to now buy two more ESCs and we had to buy the correct microcontroller, which would take even more weeks. We were already extremely behind schedule we had a total of two to three more weeks to actually be able to build this thing before we were able to get video so that we could show our professors and actually get this capstone really rolling. I would like to go off topic and thank everyone who is currently subscribed to the channel right now. These projects take a lot of time and effort to make and it's helpful to see so many people showing support and enthusiasm. If you find yourself enjoying these videos and are not currently subscribed, it would be great if you could join the channel. After all the parts were accounted for and all the 3D printing was done, it was time for assembly. And this was a lot harder than I thought. Future Jacob was about to realize something. He was going to learn an important life lesson, one he will hold on to for life. Manually sanding down parts sucks.
after the building process was done and all the parts are put together, it was finally, finally time to actually test our motors and put together our electronics. Well, we're in the final stretch. All the parts are put together and the, and the electronics have been tested. Now all that's left is to put together a skirt, which is by far the hardest possible thing you can do when creating a hovercraft. We didn't know this at first, so we kind of slapped random materials together, but we discovered later on that this was going to be one of the most difficult processes of all time. But we did end up buying two bottles of Flex Seal, so we turned it all into a big black mess. And at least it was able to hide a lot of our failures and a lot of our cuts. Overall, the skirt kind of turned out to be a little bit of a failure, and it didn't work out as well as we wanted it to. But it was still fun to fly around. All right, we're about to do some fucking bullshit. We're in a stadium right now. Yeah! We're about to fucking blow up some stuff. Nope. I mean, no. not true. Not true. I mean, nope. We're gonna hover some <clears> stuff. <throat> Hover. I'm in a college campus. We're <laughs> in a black hoodie. <laughs> I'm in a call. I'm in, I'm in a college campus in a black hoodie with Marty McFly. <laughs> oh my god! Do it, Jacob. Jacob, do it quick, and then turn it down. I think it's quieter than in, inside. No, no, no. Just, just not for a long time. Is okay. It almost got off the ground, and then I got nervous. I'm not gonna lie. That Maybe we want to put the top on. We'll right. do it briefly, and then we'll uh, well, just because it's loud and people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for watching this video. It's really great to see all the support for the channel. If you have any ideas for future videos, leave a comment down below. If I think it's interesting, I might end up making it a project. Thanks again, and have a good one.